Very good. Yep. So, Ustan, this this is a very controversial yet crucial part of Islamic creed theology debated by various mutakallimin, philosophers and scholars. Yeah. The attributes of Allah, because Tawheed is the essence of Islam, the earliest of the mutakallimin, like the Mu'tazil, Ahl al-Adl wa Tawheed, have argued for a complete divine unity or a divine simplicity. If we were just going to ask this question to you, the attributes of Allah, are they distinct? Are they independent? Are they dependent? How would a Muslim answer this question, do you think? Bismillah. Uh, let's first go, uh, this debate is with whom? Is it with Christian, or believer, or a non-believer? Yeah. Christian Orthodox, uh, yes, I believe. There's a Christian or an atheist? Christian Orthodox, I believe, yes. Uh, yeah, they, they play that usual thing. First of all, they themselves, if they go, if they go, for example, to uh, St. Thomas of Aquinas and others, uh, and, and if they expand their, 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 their debate or their discussion to the fundamentals of their theology, and Augustine in time past, but especially Thomas Aquinas, he also discussed these issues and so on, and, uh, uh, and addressed these issues. Uh, the point, the point, of, uh, the fundamental point is that uh, we uh, are we talking about an necessarily existing deity who is acting with absolute free uh, uh, freedom and uh, spontaneously, meaning uh, the necessarily existing being. Uh, first of all, we come to the the the, 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 the there must be a necessarily existing being because it, whatever we perceive immediately, which is ourself, our conscious, that's uh, the famous Descartes, uh, Cartesian. Uh, uh, Cogito ergo sum. I think, therefore, I uh, I exist. Actually, he phrased it as a as a logical conclusion. It's not a logical conclusion. It's just description. I if I perceive my own existence immediately and directly uh, through internal visualization, internal perception, and this is the absolute zero of any start. Uh, and then I recognize that there are other entities around me. And then uh, philosophers discuss: Is that just the uh, the mind creating that out of nothing, and there's no not, not, nothing existing myself, but it's impossible. It can be proven to be impossible. Some people say the subconscious, the subconscious is something different than my conscious. So we have a second entity, etc. And we come to the existence of the real world, and from that we know that we definitely have a beginning in time and so on. I think these are these these things. Nobody argue about that. This is the the basic, uh, 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 let's say. Uh, 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 the basic uh, epistemological of a theory of, of knowledge uh, starting point. So we know there's a world around us. Does not mean we know the nature of the world. It could be a simulation. Maybe we are a simulation in a in a, in a, in a, a big simulator. Like take an example. Uh, recently, we have people have developed so-called uh, visual reality, uh, uh, virtual reality, uh, metaverse, and so on. And you can enter in them, and you be part of the simulation. You, you, enter through your computer, see your computer enter in your behalf, and then you walk there and so on while you are sitting in your place. So this gives you a model of a possible simulation. But the simulation exists and separate from me. That's the point. That's the fundamental point. We are not going to know more in that. That's the, that's the first stage of, of, of proof. And then we perceive that everything which we see in, in the reality is not necessarily existing. It has It has started in time or it is, uh, it is existing depending upon other necessary condition. So by the argument of infinite regress, which can be developed strictly and mathematically, we end that the, all what uh, the things around us, the whole universe, the whole what we can perceive as, well, sometimes they call it our states of affair, our cosmos, cosmos in a more, more sense than just the physical cosmos, you see, everything, including our thoughts, our ideas, everything, must go somewhere to a starting, entity which is necessarily existing which existence does not in effect because if it cannot go for ad infinitum that's impossible so that's that's the first part of it. the question is that now this is an existing starting point is it an acting by free choice or is it um uh, is it uh, acting by necessity acting by necessity means something like like a rock water emanating for the rock the rock does not know what's going on and the water emanates from it it's a, or uh, something splitting into all of these things. Uh, that's what uh, acting by necessity. Uh, that's uh, it's relatively involved uh, and complicated. But anyway, anyway, so only these two options exist because the necessity exists in being 
the, the, the concept of necessary existence, which is which is consistent and fits with 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 the fundamental principles of reason, uh, that's some 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 philosophers doubt that, but their doubt uh, turn out to, to make uh, to make everything that does not exist and exist at the same time. So we are not going to this detail. That's in, in, in expand. We expanded a little bit in the book of Tawheed about that, but leave that aside. The necessary existing is only one entity, one being. There cannot be two. With a usual argument, because if uh, anyone having a feature or characteristic, whatever you call it, independent of what's meaning of feature, but we perceive what is the meaning of something having a feature or characteristic. If he has a certain characteristic, then it's because of his nature of necessarily existing, of his modality, that that feature must be uh, 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 the same for any other entity which is necessarily existing. This way, two necessarily existing being, you cannot find any distinguishing feature in any one of them which the other one does not have. Because if one has feature and the other does not have, then he has a deficiency and uh, it's not necessarily existing. So it is one. It is one. And this oneness in absolute. It cannot be divided in two bits because if two be bits, then the one bit is in need of the other one and then this one is contingent, the bit A and bit B is also contingent, and the combination of two is even more contingent. Cannot be necessarily existing. So it's an absolute symbol. Now, people go, that's where really they, they should work from that, then uh, uh, refute that it could be acting by necessity like a nature, because this is impossible, nothing will emerge, because it will be like an eternal rock, etern absolutely hard, nothing can emanate from it, because it's absolutely simple. It cannot divide it. Nothing can emanate from it. It can't. It cannot give birth to a child. Nothing like that. So that's not possible. The other one is the absolute spontaneity, acting mm. by faith, which requires that he is, uh, in some general sense, living and uh, conscious and living. Uh, what, what we call conscious and acting by uh, 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 in freedom. That's that's what yep. we call usually in in human language a living being, a person, mm. a person. 